Hi there and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Photography tutorial. Today I'm going to be using a laptop to show you how you can make one of these double exposure tree portraits. You can see here that we've got half a face and a tree coming around it to create this really cool thing. The bark of the tree becomes the neck and it all looks really exciting and interesting. There's several artists that do work like this, in particular Antonia Mora is a very good one that does similar artwork like this. So to do this we're going to need a photograph of a face, so here's a photograph of my face, and we're going to need a photograph of a tree, so there's a photograph of a tree to get. The photograph of the tree onto the same file, you go file, open and place, and that will open it up into a new layer. Once we've got this, we need to put this layer behind the background layer, like so. And we will experiment with what the pictures will look like by changing the opacity so that we can then rescale the images to make them fit. What I thought worked well with this picture of the tree is how these bits look like the neck. So I want to enlarge the picture of the tree so it fills that area. So the best way of doing that is to click on my desktop, press Ctrl minus to make my image a bit smaller, and then drag the corners of the back of the image so that it becomes bigger. And I can see roughly where I want to place it. Let's stretch it slightly. Stretch it slightly wider. And I can move it into the area where I'm going to place it. Um, when I'm happy with its arrangement, right there I think. Once I'm happy with it, press enter. And then press control plus on the keyboard make the image fill the screen again like so <clears throat> now it's a question of masking out the areas that I want to keep as faces so the best way to do this is to create a mask over here using this button and then making sure I've got black selected over here let's move this out of the way slightly Making sure I've got black selected by clicking this little arrow here. Using the paintbrush. And I've set the paintbrush to a soft paintbrush and a thousand pixels, the biggest brush that I can get. And then I'm going to mask out areas of the image. So that I can see the background through. What I'm going to do actually first is just bucket fill the whole thing. So I'm going to go to my paint bucket, bucket fill all of it so the whole thing becomes a mask. Then I'm going to switch to white. Then I'm going to use the paintbrush, set to a thousand, and I'm going to start to expose bits of the face. Before I do that, I'm going to set the opacity back to a hundred, and then I'm going to bring in bits of the face where I want them to be seen, like so. So that I slowly expose bits of the image underneath. Where I want it to be. Now. As I go along doing this. I'll get a bit of the eye. 
you can see that we've got roughly all the bits of face that we need. One more bit there, chin is. And then we can switch back to the black. We can change the size slightly. So it's a little bit smaller. And we can start to mask some of it back over with the background. So we've got our face coming through the background. Now if we do too much we just switch it back again and we can remask bits of the image like so. Just a little bit more up where the eye is here. Now, this works great as a colour image. It works really nice with the greens, etc. But I think quite often these things look better in black and white. Some of the artists use black and white, so I'll show you how we can change that. So we go to our layer, making sure we've selected the image, not the mask. So make sure there's a white border around this one. We go to Image, Adjustments, and then black and white. And it will just take a moment to get this screen up, click OK. And you can now see it's got black and white. Black and white with the color green works really well, but it might be even better if it was all black and white. So we click on the background one. And we go image adjustments black and white again. This way it creates the whole image in black and white. And we click OK. And you can see we've got a really nice image here. It's a little bit grey. So one way to get some definition and some um, better quality to the image is to go to Image, Adjustment and Levels. And if you've never used Levels before, they're a really useful way of adding contrast and brightness in a more controlled way. So this graph represents the blacks and this is the whites. So if we bring the blacks in slightly you can see we're making the whole image darker and then if we bring the white in slightly we'll add highlights to it that will make it really pop and then once we've done that we can move the greys the mid tones around so we're really happy with where they are about there should be great click ok and you'll notice that it makes the portrait look quite grey, so we'll click on the layer with the portrait. And we'll go to Image, Adjustment, Levels. And we'll do the same thing with the portrait and the blacks in. And then the whites in slightly. And you can see it really makes the image come together as a double exposure like so. We'll click OK. And there you have it, a really straightforward but a very effective um, double exposure with a tree and a person. Obviously you need to take a picture of a person, you need to take a picture of a tree. Once you've got those two elements you can then experiment with the size and put it together to make one of these things. Now if you've enjoyed today's tutorial feel free to pop over to my channel Hit that subscribe button, tick the notification bell, so when you're notified when I make new videos. There's a whole range of Photoshop and Photo P videos on my channel. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And if you have, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you'd like me to do any particular tonics in the future. Okay, have a great day and thank you for watching.